All right, fantastic, great. And then I'm going to make sure that's over here. Okay, so I kind of have to switch screens whenever I share my, um, my desktop with you. So I will do my best to keep my eye on the chat, but FYI, I might miss a few things. So um, there's a few ways that we can do this. And Cece, thank you, I love doing Creative Live. I'm happy you're on the call today. So first of all, um, I want to point out my Facebook page to you because first of all, it's awesome. And second, as I was telling people who hopped on a little bit early, I am 10 likes away from a thousand. And so if you happen to be on Facebook, because I mean, who's never not on Facebook, but if you happen to be on Facebook, then please like my page. It's facebook.com slash Alexander Cherie, Alexander Cherie. And that would be a super awesome Christmas present to get uh, over a thousand before the end of the year. But then the second reason you might want to do that is because since I kind of have to switch back and forth between the presentation and this and the, seeing the chat with you guys, it, you can message me in the um, on my Facebook page and I've got my phone and my iPad and so I'll get those notifications just in case like if you have something super pressing that you'd want to ask or if there's some technical problem that you want to bring my awareness to. So facebook.com slash Alexander Cherie. That's enough of that. Let's go over to the presentation, shall we? All right, now it should be up, and I know many of you are Facebook friends, so if you could just let me know for sure that we are good on um, seeing the presentation. Yes, I'm gonna exit just, because <laughs> last time I kind of bulldozed through, good to go, honest, awesome, awesome. All right, good, so I'm gonna hit the big screen again, and we're gonna plow on through. Welcome everybody, I've already done the Facebook pitch, so let's go to the next slide. So today we are talking about influence intelligence and designing your best 2015. We are wrapping up the end of the year and we are looking ahead and deciding what goals we wanna reach and who we want to be in the future and what we're going to accomplish. And so today's program is uh, going to be a little bit of a twist on that goal setting mindset and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. So first of all, I want to kind of bring you to this present moment. I know that you might have some emails in front of you or uh, you know, you're on Facebook or whatever, but I want to check in with you and ask a truly honest question and I really want an honest honest answers from you guys is how does it feel to look ahead? I know that I have kind of mixed emotions about it and I'm going to hop on over to the chat just to see you guys as well. How does it feel to look ahead? Is it a good feeling? Is it a scary feeling? Um, 995 likes and counting. Thank you, Jonathan, for bringing that to my awareness. It's a little bit scary to look ahead. It's positive for you, Seth. That's awesome. Does anybody have a little bit of that? Uh, <laughs> Lisa is numb and exhausted. That's understandable. It's been an up and down year for sure, but I'm happy that you're on this call today to talk about it. Scary and exciting from Rose, and I totally understand that. I kind of have that mixed emotions about it as, as well. Luke says, anxious, a challenge to look ahead while trying to be present. Amen to that, brother. And ready to move forward. Curiously nervous. I love that. I love that you're curious about the nervousness rather than judgmental about that nervousness, Jonathan. That's phenomenal. And Aurora would like some focus about 2015. That's great. Definitely will give you a something to focus on that most people miss when they talk about planning their future. So definitely stay tuned, Aurora. I think you're going to like it a lot. And neutral living in the moment because there are so many wonderful unexpected things happening from Shayna. That's great. Good for you. I wish I was as zen as you are. <laughs> and uh, exciting sidebar. Are we using the bridge to answer questions? I'm not sure what that means. Um, there will be, there will be Q&A later on, if that's, if that's what you mean, John. And hopefully that answers your question. 
But from, from generally speaking, it seems like people have uh, positive emotions as well as kind of not necessarily negative emotions, but you know, nervous. Uh, one thing that I'm kind of excited or interested in that, um, and Sheila says that she's super excited because 2014 has been great. That's phenomenal. And uh, Cece is always hopeful and she's ready to close the book on 2014. That's great. I'm going to go ahead and go into the main presentation. So for me, I find this part of, of life, this, this cycle of going from the end of the year to the new year to be um, exciting because you get this chance to look ahead and decide who you want to be in the future. Um, I don't know about you, you guys didn't talk about too much, but when I, it also forces me to look back a little bit and I'm very proud and happy of some of the things that I've been able to do, but then also get a little bit, a little bit like, oh yeah, that didn't happen. And oh shoot, that didn't work out. But that's okay because there are always things to um, look forward to in the future. So um, one thing that we're going to talk about is I'm sure you're looking at a calendar as to, okay, in quarter one, I'm going to accomplish this. And in quarter two, I'm going to accomplish that. And that's phenomenal. Um, but that's a very, very kind of linear way of looking at your goals ahead of you. And I want to give you a little bit of a paradigm shift into how you can make 2015 your influential year. So what I mean by that is when you are creating your influential goals, you're not necessarily going to be looking at a linear calendar. Instead, what you're going to be looking at is a chessboard in front of you. So as you play the game of chess, you're not just simply moving in a straight line from point A to point B to point C to point D, just as you would from January to February to March to April. When we're talking about influence, we're talking about different maneuvers and strategies to where it doesn't go in that perfect linear line. Sometimes you need to, you know, move up and then to the right a little bit. Sometimes you're going to take a few diagonal steps. So your influential plan for 2015 is really more like a chessboard rather than a calendar. And as you probably have figured out, the most important part of the chessboard is the players that you have at your disposal, those chess pieces as to which part of your team, your influential chessboard team is going to be most effective in conquering which goals. So the queen is going to be the one that can maneuver however she wants, but then the pawn can only have a few steps ahead. So this is the perfect metaphor for what it's like in um, in, in influence is that sometimes you have to choose the right piece for the right goal that you're trying to accomplish. And we're going to talk mostly about these pieces on your influential chessboard um, and, and how people like, as, as you probably have seen on the copy that I wrote, of uh, how people like James Bond and Sherlock Holmes might approach it. And we'll get to that in just a little bit. So for those of you who are new to me, I'm going to go through this very quickly just so you know, but that's me with the curly hair. My name is Cherie Alexander, and I am a writer and speaker and coach. And as you can see through the logos, I've been featured on different things, and I have clients from different companies and organizations. And a little bit about me is that all of my information comes from personal interviews, research and um, and learning from master influencers and the people that I have personally talked with and learned from include CIA field operatives as well as undercover DEA agents as well as trial attorneys who have amazing win records hostage negotiators military intelligence officers and even con artists and pickup artists that's a picture of an old school pickup artist and as well as a mentalist and, and a few other characters in the mix. So everything that I teach today is based off of the strategies that I've learned from these individuals who are skilled at accomplishing things purely based off of their words and their presence. 
But as we look ahead to 2015, we're going to talk a little bit more about how these guys might approach their 2015 goals, James Bond and Sherlock Holmes. And the reason why I pull up James Bond and Sherlock Holmes is usually when people think of the ultimate spy, they think of James Bond. And, um, and as I mentioned before, people that I've learned from are include uh, CIA field agents and, and undercover law enforcement, FBI as well. And so um, James Bond really isn't the best spy in the world because he never really goes undercover. <laughs> at the end of the day, everybody knows it's James Bond that's at that fancy hotel, but he is sort of that ultimate spy that comes to mind. And then with Sherlock Holmes, he's highly observant, but then also very strategic. In fact, Sherlock Holmes is phenomenal um, in the stories and the shows and the movies of how he gets information from people and then uses that information to achieve his end goal. So we'll talk a little bit about that as we move along. So I created a worksheet for you guys. And uh, let me give you the link for that so you can download it and follow along. No, don't do that. That's not what we want. This is what we want. All right. It's a simple PDF. Uh, but I know many people like the worksheet type scenario and it just it gives you a really good guide as to how you can beyond the um, discussion today how you can sit down and workshop through this for you know up to 30 minutes even after the call today so in the chat I put up a link for you to download the worksheet and this is the basic structure of today's program so feel free to grab that and we shall move along okay so the first thing that we must talk about in looking ahead is setting your goals. So in at the top of the worksheet, you have the, the goal setting section, and I want you to give yourself the freedom to go ahead and write out the goals that you want, no matter how ridiculous or far-fetched or scary they may seem. So there's a few different areas in which you might want to go ahead and, and consider your goals. First of all, your career. So do you want to um, get a promotion? Do you want to get a raise? Do you want to um, be sent to a different part of the world for your career? What are those goals that you would like to accomplish? And the next one is obviously projects. So is there something within your company that you're wanting to accomplish? or I know one of my big projects that I'm wanting to finally just put a beautiful bow tie on or a present uh, wrapping paper. There you go, that's what I'm going for. One thing that I'm wanting to finish and accomplish is my book, as well as I'm thinking one big project for next year is hosting a live event here in Los Angeles at near kind of quarter three or quarter four. And so what are those big projects that you want to accomplish? The next is awards. Is there something that, or even credentials, is there, do you want to get certified as a hypnotherapist, as I know somebody on the call today does want to? Or are you wanting to put a few initials at the end of your name? What are those awards? And then, of course, financial. I mean, look, we got to make money to live. And so if you want to make more money, then you need to be very clear about those goals. And I know we're hearing those people coming in and out with those dings. If I knew how to turn it off, I totally would. Um, so thanks for sticking with me. And then uh, last but certainly not least are your personal goals. Are you wanting to be more social? Are you wanting to join more groups? Are you wanting to attract that person, the love of your life this year? Are you wanting to travel and give yourself time for vacation this year? The most important aspect of this, and please don't gloss over it, is that you have to gain clarity around what you want rather than focusing on what you don't want. So go ahead and give yourself, this is the perfect time of year to give yourself that freedom and that breathing room to lay claim to this is what I'm wanting to accomplish. This is it. Okay? Now, in any other goal setting class or webinar, you are probably going to hear about things like once you set the goal, then you give yourself the deadline and then you consider the resources that you have and if you need to go out and get different resources and then you backtrack your goal and set the milestones along the way. 
And all of that is 100% valid. Um, this is not what today's webinar is about. Today's webinar is going to be a little bit of a twist, but I do want to go ahead and point out the fact that yes, these are very important factors in goal setting. This is what you'll typically hear in any other course or call about goal setting. However, what most people miss is the most, in my opinion, the most critical part of this goal setting process. And that's what today is about, about how to truly make 2015 your influential year. So we're going to talk about influential goal setting. And the first part of that, and again, this is how James Bond and Sherlock Holmes would view it, but bringing it to the real world, this is how the top millionaires and billionaires of the world would consider it. So yes, these people like Oprah and Ariana Huffington and Damon John and Richard Branson, you see them and, and their, their accomplishments and their success, and you may think, oh, okay, they just set a goal and then they throw money at it. Yeah, that's great, and they do have those resources. However, each and every one of them asks themselves the question that we are going to ask ourselves today looking ahead. And the first part of influential goal setting is identifying your key players. So this is where I think most people miss out when they start their goal setting process. And that is that they think that they see the goal ahead, they create those milestones, but every milestone is what they need to accomplish along the way. What most people fail to ask themselves are who are their key players, meaning who can support me in achieving those goals? Or who are the gatekeepers that keep me from achieving those goals or will allow me to achieve those goals? So your, your key players could be your boss, your key players could be your team members, your key players could be people that you need to hire to bring on to your team. Um, without a doubt, your key player is going to be your, your husband or your wife or your boyfriend or girlfriend because they are a key part of your life. You need to consider the people around you because one of the most important resources that you have is the human resource. There are going to be people along the way that will either support you or hinder you in your goals. If they are going to support you, then you need to figure out how to bring them onto your team. If they could potentially hinder you, then you need to figure out the strategy of how to get them onto your side. It's just like the spies would do of how to turn somebody into an asset. So I want to go ahead and go over to the chat and check in with you guys. And... I know the ding dings, if I, I, someday I'll figure out how to turn that off, but who might you consider to be your key players for your goals? And you don't need to write the names, but I do want to check in and see if you, if you're grabbing onto this concept, if it's kind of opening you up to something that most people don't talk about. So if you write in like your manager or even your parents could be key players, in the chat box, kind of share with me who your, your key players might be. Your business manager, fantastic, absolutely. And Yusuf, like what, uh, can, can you give me a little bit of a hint as to how the business manager is a key player for your potential goal, if your goal is promotion or raise or, or even just an easier business life? That's another thing in that personal goal that you can set is, I would really like to have better relationships with the people that I work with. Um, so then understanding that you need to use some influence to make those relationships a little bit better. Um, and then Selena says, key players are collaborators. That's great. And Aurora says that she's starting something on her own and she's not entirely sure, but I definitely have been thinking about trying to figure that out. That's great. So Aurora, you and probably many other people on this call are in a very similar situation in that you are creating something from scratch and so you're not entirely sure. Now, while that may seem as an obstacle, I want you to make sure that you see that as an opportunity, that this is your one moment, not one moment, but a key moment to use your imagination. So go ahead and, and have fun imagining like, what would it look like if I had so-and-so, if I had such and such. John says, key players for me are my support system um, because he's writing a book. That's great. 
So John, like in John's case, his key players might be if he has a, a writing coach, um, if he has an editor, if he's self-publishing and has a design team, those are going to be key players. So definitely entire system around that one project that may seem like a very solo type of project because writers tend to be, you know, uh, wrapped up in our little cocoons, but clearly there are key players in that entire process. And um, Shana says, my supervisor and managers and other business partners and their managers in getting buy-in for any projects like funding, approval, strategy, alignment, perfect. Jacqueline says, I'm changing fields as I was not in the right place before, and I don't believe I have very strong relationships right now. My boyfriend can be supportive, but also a hindrance with that. <laughs> well, I'm not going to comment too, too much on the personal life of things, but um, so if you're changing fields and if you're not sure about the relationships in the field that you're wanting to move into, then key players are going to be like going into networking events or finding those networkers who are really strong connectors. When I moved out to LA, I got connected with somebody who's known as like, she just knows everybody. So if you can identify those type of individuals, even better. And CC says that her key players are going to be technical advisors and her life partner, which is phenomenal. And... Uh, totally new, building an audience and a support system will be key. Absolutely. So as I mentioned before, if you're starting from scratch with your goal, that's totally great. Then map out your ideal life, but consider like who will be those people be in your ideal life, not just the steps and milestones along the way, but the people that will be involved in the process because they are the ones that are ultimately going to push you ahead or hold you back. Um, and then your communication will play a huge role in that relationship. The next part, and if you're following through on the worksheet, is the timeline. This is something that I learned from the intelligence community, specifically within the agency, is that any time an agent is given a mission, their first question, without fail, their first question is, what is my timeline? And so if they, let's say, need to turn an asset and, or get information from somebody, then the mission may be, we need this information within five weeks because we know something is, is brewing and we need to know when it's going to happen. And so the techniques and the skills and the gambits that you run for a five-week mission are completely different than a mission that lasts over five years. And yes, let me clarify that they are given missions that can last five years. So your timeline is, is something that you need to take into consideration. And so your timeline may be a question of, do I want, will I accomplish this goal within a week? Is this like a couple days? Is this a couple months? Or is this something that will take more time? that is this more of a multi-year plan and granted the longer you the further out you are looking then the types of people or relationships might change but for example if you're writing a book and you have no connections to the publishing industry and you need an agent then that's going to be a couple months it could even be a year or so before you land that agent and then shopping around your proposal to publishers can even last a year or two even longer. So understanding who those key players are in that process is going to, um, is, is going to make a difference in how you might think about this plan and the people involved. But the key part here is make sure that you are very clear on which is your timeline and which is their timeline. So often when we want something, especially like in sales, for example, I see this all the time that when people are wanting to land the sale, get the deal, their timeline is more of that week long one when really the prospect or client's timeline is more like a couple months out. So you need to get clarity around is the timeline that you have given this through your own desire and needs and, 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 um, oh, uh, perceived, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like you want it instantly. There's a word and I'm blanking. The coffee hasn't kicked in yet. Um, but if you want something soon and quick or 
is the timeline from your prospect's point of view going to be a little bit longer? For example, they can't say yes until a budget is approved and budget approval doesn't happen until August. So take a look at what you see the timeline to be, what they see the timeline to be, and see if there's a middle ground or more than likely their timeline is the timeline you're going to have to work with. So make sure that you go through that process. So we've got our key players, we've got our timeline for the influential goal setting, and the next is possibly the most important, and that is the influential profile. So I'm not going to go into the influential profile today, but I do want to um, offer this to you. This is 100% free. If you go to this link at sharialexander.com slash profiler, there is a free download where you can download the covert profiling tool and it covers the seven aspects of influential profiling. And if you've been on my past classes or you've seen on Creative Live, um, or if you've done the Building Personal Influence course, I've talked about this in a few different ways. Um, but there are seven key areas in which you can determine like where are, what are the best ways to influence this particular person and the tool helps you out. When you download the profiler, there is an opportunity to get the profiling handbook as well as a year of covert missions, totally up to you. But again, this profiling tool right here is absolutely free and I shall, uh, let's see if I can do this. I can do it. I'm gonna put the link in the chat for a quick access for you guys. And bam, woohoo, there we go. Fantastic. So feel free to download that, again, 100% free. So um, once you profile your mark, figuring out what is going to be most influential for those people, oh, and just to clarify for those who are new to me, um, I use the term mark as, to be a shortcut way to describe the person that you're wanting to influence. So rather than having to say the person that you're wanting to influence over and over again, I say, you know, that's your mark. Um, that comes from both the con artist world as well as the uh, military intelligence and agency. So once you figure out how to um, influence your mark, there are the next step is to figure out different leverage points of what will motivate that person towards the action that you want. So in this next section, I'm going to talk about the different leverage points. I'm going to share, I believe I have six on here, the six most common leverage points that you can, you can use to get people to take action. And the whole, the whole idea of leverage is something simple and small can make a very big difference. Something simple and small can move boulders. And so while we can do that in the physical space, we can absolutely do that in the communication space. So here are the leverage points that you might be able to use for your benefit. The first one is um, the leverage point of prestige. If you identify that your mark is more concerned with prestige, then your influential um, uh, intention needs to be wrapped around the idea of, okay, if you do this, then people will notice, people will admire you, you will feel special, um, it, it will uh, elevate you higher than everyone else. These are these are kind of the the general ideas behind what you would put in your influential pitch. And sometimes the best way to understand these leverage points, and I had a little fun with this because, you know, it's the end of the year and, and life's too short not to have fun, I have pulled a few movie examples for you. So here are two people that you would consider to be motivated by prestige. The first one is The Wolf of Wall Street, and clearly, like, one easy way to identify somebody who is very concerned with prestige is if they have money, they want it to be seen. So they have the fancy watch, they have the fancy car, they wear the tailored suits, things along those lines. Even if somebody may not have the money, though, like Anchorman, <laughs> um, they still can have this aura of, I, I still want to feel special, I want to feel noticed, I want to feel above everybody else. So from these two characters, I'm sure you can start to see different uh, ways that you can, you can uh, identify that leverage point of prestige and you use that in your influential conversation. The next one is control or power. So these could be two separate ones and I considered separating them, but for our timetables today, 
I went ahead and I, I put them together. So somebody who wants control or power over something is basically that person that seems to want to have their fingers in every aspect. They almost are, they want to be the puppet master that has the string attached to every component of, of uh, a project, of a concept, of an idea. So one way that you can, you can influence somebody who desires that control and power is to wrap your influential conversation around the idea of giving them choices so they are making the decisions along the way. So they say, if you say like, well, we could do it this way or we could do it that way, which do you think is better? You're constantly going to kind of throw it back to them for them to have their input. And one of the best examples, <laughs> clearest examples of two people who really desire that control and power are going to be the Underwoods from House of Cards. Clearly these individuals are a, a heightened example of people who desire that control and power. But when you would want to influence them, then you, you highlight how if they take action, then they will gain more control, they will gain more power. Or you give them the illusion of that control and power in the, in the discussion. So I'm, I'm just hopping over to the chat here. If you guys think of any other characters that use these different leverage points that I'm talking about, then feel free to share them in the chat. Like if, because I, I took a little time to brainstorm different ideas. And so the ones that I'm sharing with you today are the ones that came to my mind. But if there's other references that resonate with you, then please do share in the chat for everybody because it just might help be better further illustrate the idea, the concepts. All right. So the next one, let's see if I can do, please more examples. I don't know House of Cards. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, Cece, you should just watch House of Cards because it's amazing. <laughs> but um, let's see other examples. I mean, uh, uh, any, any of those, those shows that um, like the Tudors. Oh, the Tudors is a great one if you haven't seen that. Um, oh, good. I'm glad you're liking these archetype examples, Shana. Happy to hear that. And uh, yes, see, just it's it's just your homework is to watch House of Cards. <laughs> it's the best homework I can give you. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to keep the chat over here just to have it. Um, the next one is going to be somebody who desires harmony. Um, and so you saw those examples. But so this is the person who really takes into consideration how everyone else will feel, how everyone else will react, and everybody's different viewpoint before they make a decision. So this is a person whose leverage point is harmony. So if you're trying to influence that person, then you would not talk about just your mark and talk about how their decision will affect them personally, you want to also highlight how it will affect everybody around them. So the examples that came to my mind were, and I can't remember this guy's name, but um, from How to Train Your Dragon. It's a, I believe it's Pixar or DreamWorks film. It's phenomenal. It'll make you cry. It's amazing. Uh, but one of the things that he does in the movie is creates harmony between the dragons and his and his village of people. And the next one is uh, Sound of Music Lady. <laughs> Forgive me for not knowing names. <laughs> But she clearly like wanted to create the harmony within the family um, and, you know, bring the kids closer to the dad, all of that good stuff. So uh, if any other archetypes come to mind, please share in the chat. I'll hop over there in a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and move to the next leverage point. The next one is independence. So some people just simply aren't team players for a few different reasons. Um, independence can kind of overlap with with that power and control, but I feel like it's really its own thing. So independence means more like they may not need to make all the decisions. They may not need to have the strings attached to every aspect of it, but they do want the opportunity to make a choice, move forward with a choice, and then maybe even back out of a choice if they so desire and, and move forward in their own time, in their own way, however they feel fit. Um, one person, if you uh, watch the Creative Live course, one person in the audience really valued independence. And for him, that meant 
financial independence that you didn't have to ask others for help. It meant being able to travel on a whim if he so wanted to. And so then the person that he wants to find in his life would be somebody who could travel with him. Um, and just basically their movements are their own in their own way in their own time. So the two examples here are going to be Tony Stark from Iron Man and then Wolverine. Yes, I'm a nerd. There's going to be a lot of nerdy references. So what I like about these two examples is that independence can show itself in two different ways. For Tony Stark, his independence was more of he wanted to be the playboy, he was rich, he could do anything he wanted, and that's that type of independence. And then there's kind of the Wolverine type who kind of just wants to be a loner, do his own thing in his own way, not really a team player. Um, so it's just kind of the two different ways that independence might manifest. And so either way you want to, if you're wanting to influence somebody like this, then you're wanting to highlight how this action will give them more independence. They may not have to deal with as many aspects of a project that, that bore them or, or um, make them have to deal with the minutia that limits their time to do the things they really want to do. These are just some aspects of how you might influence somebody with the leverage point of independence. The next leverage point is fear. So truth be told, we are all influenced by this leverage point. There's different aspects of how you can use it, um, but basically the whole idea behind the leverage point of fear is that we, will, we are wired to move towards pleasure or away from pain. Most people are quicker to move away from pain than they are towards pleasure. And then there are those people who solely view their world through the lens of fear, of which thing is more scary than the other. It's kind of like choosing the lesser of those two evils rather than, oh, there's something amazing, let me go towards that. So the perfect archetypes for this is going to be C-3PO, who always points out the horrible things and until something worse shows up, then he won't take action and good old Ron Weasley from Harry Potter. He is only forced into taking action until something worse shows itself. And so how you would leverage somebody who's really, whose main leverage point is fear, is you point out how their current path will lead them down a more, a worse outcome than choosing the path that you want them to take. So painting the picture of kind of worst case scenarios rather than best case scenarios that you might use with somebody whose leverage point is prestige. And last but not least, and then I'll hop over to the chat, is the leverage point of tradition. So some people are more interested in doing the things the way um, things have always been done, that this is how we do it, this is the process, these are the steps, and we do this because it has been proven in the past. And even though it's from the same show, I thought they were both great examples, and it's going to be Carson, and then, um, I'm blanking on her name, Maggie Smith, I can't remember her character's name, from Downton Abbey, that the, even though the world is changing around them, they want to hold on to their traditions because those are, that's a sign of respect to the past, and you do what you need to do because that is the proven way because it's worked in the past. Now, the tricky part is if you're trying to influence somebody who values tradition and you're proposing something new and different, how might you influence that person? So the way you go about it is you probably, more than likely, you need to do your research to find examples of how this has worked somewhere else in either a different part of the world or a different industry or a different department, but you need to find examples of how this has worked in some aspect. And that will at least open their minds to the possibility of, okay, well, if it's worked there, then it may work here. Also, to influence this person, you need to constantly call back to how this ties in perfectly with past traditions, how you will still hold on to threads from the fabric of what has worked in the past, that you're not doing a complete overhaul, how you're enhancing um, and paying homage to the way things have been done. So as you can see, with little tweaks in 
your presentation and how you talk about something, it can make a big difference in the leverage points for that person. So I'm going to hop over to the chat and see what everybody's talking about. All right. And also, uh, yeah, I almost thought about Mary Poppins for Harmony as well. I wasn't quite sure if that was going to be 100% fit. Lady Dowager, that's it. And I'm happy that I have my fellow nerds who get my references. Very happy with that. Um, yes. Oh, absolutely, Rose. This is a great point. In Downton Abbey, you have great examples of people who are influenced by prestige, people who are influenced by fear, and people who are influenced by tradition. Now, if you take the example of um, the, oh, the, oh my goodness, what's her name? Shelley, the, the woman who believes in psychics and past lives, and then she plays the American mother that comes to visit. And in that world, she kind of represents the woman who bucks tradition. So how you would influence Carson versus that American mom um, would be too... Shirley MacLaine. That's it. Thank you very much. Shirley, Shirley MacLaine's character. So how you would influence those two people would be completely different. In fact, for everybody on the call and those listening to the recording, this is a game that... This is kind of a mental game that I play all the time anytime I'm watching shows that I really enjoy is I'm paying attention to... What are the leverage points for that character and how would I influence that person? Now, sometimes with great writing, the writers actually work in how to best influence that person. So it's a great uh, learning aspect to, to this world of influence. But at all times, it's a great mental game that you can play. It's like, oh, okay, that person, that a leverage point would be this. And, and again, in that profiler tool that I shared before, those seven different aspects are the things that you would kind of perk your ears towards to figure out their complete influential profile. Um, Aurora asks, are people usually dominated by one leverage point even though they may show hints of other leverage points? Um, no, we are not black and white creatures. We all have shades of what is most um, um, influential for us at different times. However, very rarely will you get diametrically opposed leverage points in one person. So very rarely is the person that values tradition going to also value um, innovation or, or creativity, or I'm trying to think of better words, the opposite of tradition, like breaking new ground. You'll very rarely see those, those completely opposing leverage points in one person. So it's more, it's, you kind of figure out where your compass is going to point for that, that individual. Okay, so those are the main leverage points. I'm going to hop back to this presentation. And we did tradition, tradition. I almost did uh, the um, uh, Fiddler on the Roof, but I wasn't sure if a musical reference would fly with everybody on the call today. So I went more pop culture. <laughs> All right. So in our influential goal setting, we have figured out our key players. We've talked about our timeline. And uh, with the timeline... Um, we just don't have time today to talk about how different, how you'd implement different strategies or gambits based on the timeline. However, it's still an important part to at least put in your influential goal setting, which is in that worksheet I provided for you. For you, and then we we discuss the profile of that person and um, the leverage points that you might find. And then the next part is perhaps the most important: is who do you need to be? Who do you need to be in order to accomplish these goals? So we're going to get fairly deep here, and I'm more than happy to answer questions, but I just want to go over this concept um, first because it's, it's, it's just so important. The values and beliefs that you hold currently, you can figure out what those values and beliefs are by either just sitting down and kind of asking yourself questions, um, I also would really recommend that you read Awaken the Giant Within by Tony Robbins. But one of the best ways that I have been able to identify my true values and beliefs, not my, my, uh, the person I want to be, but my true values and beliefs is based off of my actions. When I look over this past year of where I have spent most of my time, where I have spent most of my money, where I have spent most of my energy and efforts, that is where I really am I able to identify like, oh, I think I actually value 
um, my introverted side a little bit more than my extroverted side. That's interesting. Now, don't judge yourself. Just simply take notice and and um, be curious about that. There's no, there's no good or bad. It's just simply identifying how you have been this last year and then comparing it to who you want to be this upcoming year. And then take the moment in, and it's in that last part of your worksheet, to figure out, well, who would I have to be in order to accomplish these goals? If it's writing a book, um, then clearly like discipline is going to be an important part. You're probably going to value creativity. Uh, you might value research. If you're talking about influencing people, then and you want to rise to the ranks of a leadership role within your company, but you're more of a curmudgeon and don't get along with the people in your company, then you need to figure out ways to tap into or take on a new and different set of values or beliefs when it comes to that. So this is the moment where you kind of have to take a look in the mirror and decide, okay, this is where I am, but then I need to figure out in order to get to where I need to be, what are the steps along the way? So one activity that you can do is once you kind of do this compare and contrast bit, find one actionable step that you can take at the end of this webinar. If you want to be somebody who it's, develops those new relationships that somebody mentioned before, then right after this webinar, one step that you can take is to call somebody that you met at an event or somebody said that you said that you were going to follow up with but failed to do so. Take that those five minutes right after this webinar to email that person, call that person. I really recommend calling because we hide behind email way too much. Um, even over the last few months, like one thing that I noticed that I, I talk about connecting with people so often, it's my company is Observe Connect Influence. You observe the people around you, you connect with them, and then you influence them. But this last year, I've spent a lot of time like in in my in my apartment and writing and and not actively reaching out to people as much as I should and connecting with people. And so one thing that I started to do is during my afternoon walk with my dog, I started calling people that I hadn't talked to in a while and connecting with them. I call my brother, I call friends from, you know, years ago and checking in and making that small little step to connect to be this person that I know that I want to be. So asking yourself, who do I want to be? All right, I'm checking into the chat. Um, we got people helping each other out. Okay, great. We're sharing the, the leverage points. Are these objectives and are these subjective and different in each area of life? They can be. They absolutely can be. Um, however, in the aspect of which you are going to be looking at the person that you're trying to influence, you'll probably see kind of more one aspect. So if it's somebody that you're trying to influence in business, you're, pro you're probably not going to be seeing the person that they are in their personal life with their kids and so on and so forth. So don't, don't overcomplicate it too much at these beginning stages. Um, so I'm going to hop over to this presentation. So we talked a lot about, we talked about, let's go back to this. We're looking ahead to 2015. We talked about the key players that you need to identify and working with them. We talked about the timeline and how a short timeline changes your tactics for a longer timeline. We briefly touched on one aspect of profiling the people that you're wanting to influence and then deciding who you want to be as you move forward. So I would be remiss if I did not give you an opportunity to you know, attack all of these aspects and be your best self in your 2015. And yes, this is the point when I tell you about my absolute favoritist program in the world. I have no shame about this because it's awesome. So get ready. Um, I have a monthly coaching program called Influence HQ. We have a few members on the call today. You guys are awesome for being on here. And I want to talk to you about how this program can help you delve deep into all of the aspects that we talked about today. And as much as we like to plan ahead for a full year of 2015, we don't know what twists and turns are going to show up. And sometimes figuring out the influential profile for one person can be more tricky than expected or figuring out which gambit to run for short-term versus long-term goal are going to be a bit different. And so that's why Influence HQ is your resource. 
So here are the aspects of the program. First of all, if you want to learn all about Influence HQ, you can actually I'll give you the link right here. I will run through this for you. Ba -ba -ba. All right. Here we go. Bam. All right. So there's many aspects to Influence HQ. First of all, I want to point out it is 100% live, and then you can listen to the recordings later, which means that nothing that I'm talking about today is going to be content that I created two years ago, and you can just listen to the recordings as, as you wish. I am active in this process with you. So on the first Wednesday of the month, we hold master classes. And during those master classes, that's when I delve deep into a particular topic of influence, like how do you profile somebody? How do you determine if they're this personality type or that personality type? Or um, like last time on the master class, what did we talk? Oh, oh, it was awesome. My, uh, the last one I taught was how to get people to tell you things they never tell anybody else. And so it was a little bit of a crash course into elicitation and, and how you need to be um, when you're trying to get valuable information from individuals. And any aspect of, of influence that I find interesting or that I know the HQ members would find interesting. So we talk about psychology, we talk about marketing, we talk about writing, everything. On the third Wednesday of the month, we hold HQ Hangouts. And that's kind of exactly how it sounds, is we hang out and talk. More specifically, that these are group coaching calls. So just as you guys have kind of posted questions today and I've answered them, and again, there's going to be a Q&A after this, so if you have questions, I stay on the call with you today until you guys have no more questions. And that's what HQ Hangouts are like, that when people bring, we just had our last call yesterday, and people bring their questions or problems or things or goals that they're trying to achieve to the call. So for example, yesterday somebody shared a uh, sales copy email that she's wanting to send people. And so we went through that and I said, okay, how about you change this and change that? I would recommend doing this. Um, one woman is trying to recruit more people to her team and identify leaders in her team. So we talked about strategies to help her out with that. And another is building a, a new company and trying to figure out the best way to describe this because it's something new and different. And so we helped him with how to, to best communicate that. So that's the Hangouts. In addition, I record all of the master classes and the Hangouts. And so there's 24 access to the library. Many people who can't make the live call still download the audio and listen to it on their drive to work. In fact, one of the HQ members um, was listening to one of our older recordings because it applied perfectly to something new that she's trying to accomplish. So you get 24 access to the library as well. In addition to that, there is the private Facebook group. So this is where people post like, hey, something new came up. Could you give me insight into this? Hey, I need help around this. Hey, my boss just did this. And so this is the place that in between our live calls, you still have, you can still tap into this mastermind of influencers who speak the same language, who get what you're trying to accomplish and who are supporting you in those goals. So that's the private Facebook group access. In addition to that, once a quarter, I bring in guest speakers into the HQ calls and I interview them and people can ask them questions. I'll be bringing in a, a speaker in quarter one coming up that uh, I haven't announced to HQ members yet. So you guys will just have to hold on and, and find out who it is because it's exciting. Okay. And so for all of this for, in Influence HQ, you get the master classes, you get the hangouts, which is the group coaching, you have 24 access to the lab library, and that's all the archived stuff as well. It's not that you just get the stuff that once you sign up, you get from that point forward, you get all of the archive as well, in addition to the guest speakers. Now, just to give you a little bit of an insight, my executive coaching clients who hire me privately pay me $2,000 a month for those services. You're not going to be paying $2,000 a month. Other programs similar to this, and this is a very conservative figure, it's $250 a month. Um, and quite frankly, a lot of those programs that I research, they're all recorded programs. So you're not getting any direct access with the person leading the group, and those are $250 a month. 
For this program, it's $97 a month. It's ridiculously cheap, <laughs> considering that you get all of this time with me. You get me twice a month live on the calls as well as in the Facebook group. And my hourly coaching rate is $350. So it's a steal of a deal. And I do guarantee because as Influence HQ grows and the value continues to grow, I am going to be raising those prices in 2015. So heads up on that. This is the last time um, you'll be seeing 97 for, for a while. So what happens when you have influence? People in HQ talk about that they get a great amount of confidence in those high stress meetings and situations. Um, they also become more persuasive in presentations and public speaking and their writing gets better in their correspondence with their prospects and their clients and their coworkers. Also, one thing that people keep talking about is that they get more compassion around their fellow human beings. It's like you're, you're decoding this code of communication and it builds this beautiful world of compassion um, for the people around you. Also, you gain more recognition from your peers and your colleagues because you're accomplishing things. You're getting things done. You're persuading people to take action. So you're going to be recognized for being that leader in the group. In addition to respect and, of course, the personal growth. And also there's this enhanced sense of control. You feel like you're more in control of situations because you're seeing the hidden levels that everybody else is missing. And that also just builds your confidence because you have the control and power over a situation that in the past you might have felt like you were floundering around before. And of course, when you're more influential, look, money is a byproduct. You get more sales, you get the raise, you get the promotion, you get people to sign up for a, more of a program than they would have in the past. So financial um, uh, outcomes is, is just something that comes from influence. Oh, somebody unmuted themselves. I'm going to have to mute you, person. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Who can we mute? All right, I think it might have gone away. Um, all right, so as I wrap up this little bit and then we go, we're going into Q&A, again, here is the link, Influence HQ, sign up. And... There is a bonus. If you sign up for Influence HQ today, before midnight Pacific Standard Time, you get a free coaching session with me. So sign up by today. Um, also, it's $97 a month. If you sign up for the full year, you get two months for free. So it's $970 for the full year. Um, just because the math is easier and I like, to, I like that rather than having to figure out the 12. So... If you want, if you've ever wanted somebody to be in your corner to help you accomplish those goals, to figure people out, Influence HQ is the place. So go to Influence HQ to sign up to get your free bonus of a personal one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me. And folks, it is time for me to answer your questions, which I shall go over to the chat and talk with you. All right, I see you, and you've got the link for HQ, which I think, let's do this here. Okay, so what questions can I answer for you guys? Either about the leverage points, or the reason why I do the Q&A at the end as well is because it gives you the opportunity to see what an HQ hangout, the group coaching calls, are like. So I stay on the line to answer your questions about what we talked about today, or if there's a particular thing that you're wanting to accomplish, then we can chat. Uh, people will sometimes even flat out state, I'm the kind of person to, yes, Jonathan, exactly. Um, so Jonathan stated before when we were talking about the leverage points that sometimes people will even just flat out state that, they're the kind of person who, and that is absolutely true. Um, when I was, uh, I come from an acting background, and whenever you dissect a script to figure out who your character is, 
there's an aspect of the script that you want to look for, and that's kind of, it's the identifying statements of who this character believes that they are based off of overt statements. And so, um, yes, okay, sorry, I, just, I was reading the chat. Um, and so paying attention to those identifying statements are things that you directly put into that profiling tool that... I shared with you before, so absolutely very good point. Um, and that's great. So uh, Sherry says that her new director that's only been there 10 days even shared the overstatement of uh, I'm all about honesty. And so what you could use for that, if needed, you just kind of have to play your cards right, is if you said, if you need to have an honest conversation with her and you're kind of getting a little bit of resistance, then you might say something along the, or, or him, I don't know which it is. Um, and if you said, I know how much you value honesty and that's why I feel compelled to share that whatever it is. So that's using a little bit of the law of consistency. Um, always make sure that you say in a friendly way, never that you're throwing the, that identifying phrase in their face because that will backfire. And Aurora asks, what does your year plan look like? How much time do you spend planning it and going into details? All right. So my year plan, I'm, I'll give you a quick synopsis. Um, I have a, a file that I created of here are the things that I want to accomplish and then backtracking of how I need to accomplish those steps, like what are the daily activities, and I created an extensive year-long checklist of those things. And then, of course, as we talked about today, then I have um, the list of people who are my key players in a column on that document. And so it's like, for example, my agent is going to be one of those people that I need to He's kind of fallen off a little bit, like just not replying to emails and such. So I need to figure out the best ways to compel him to kind of get back into action on some things. So I have those key players in the columns based on every page is a different month. And so I kind of have an idea as to who I would need to reach out to. The later you go into, or for me, the later I go throughout the year, it's no longer specific names, but it's more titles or ideas or concepts of somebody who so it would be like meeting planner for this convention you know I don't know who that is and chances are it may be a different person by April so I just put the title of that person so that's a little bit of an insight as to what I I create Cece says can you give strategies for you're welcome Aurora CC says, can you give strategies for hearing more leverage points when coaching by phone or sales? Absolutely. Quite frankly, it's easier to pick up on a lot of those things on the phone, assuming that you are not replying to emails at the same time that you're on a phone call, assuming that you're not miming a conversation to somebody, you know, who needs paperwork from you. Um, you actually have a significant advantage over the phone than in person because your eyes are not as distracted by certain body language aspects. Um, studies have shown that we're better at detecting lies over the phone than we are face-to-face. -face. And when it comes to lie detection specifically, um, I lean more towards statement analysis rather than body language tells. And so you can kind of there's also an aspect, and we, I'm going to talk about this more in HQ, but how you can kind of elicit this type of information to figure out what leverage points work for that person. So basically, the point is to be present and not be distracted and pay attention. Um, and then also, when you throw something out there that doesn't quite seem to land, then you might just kind of need to think quick on your feet and, and pivot. So if you, they are wincing at, or well, we're talking about on the phone, but in sales in particular, like if they wince at tradition or something, then you might go, oh, okay, well, the make be creativity is more along those lines. So paying attention to their reactions as well. Um, Aurora says, uh, oh yeah, okay, if that's from before. John says, for a writer, what would you suggest? You're welcome, Cece. What would you suggest one do to build their network in the publishing world. 
So there's plenty of conferences that are around. Um, so, uh, one, I have kind of mixed feelings about this one, but it just kind of depends on what your starting point is. If you're in the beginning stages, then Author 101 is pretty good out in Vegas. Um, it, sometimes the presenters are a bit hit and miss, a little bit more miss than hit. But it's uh, it's still a very good conference to to check out, and other the names of other ones. There's a huge one out in New York. I, I'm blanking, but it's like publishers, I don't know, convention or something like that. Um, it's oh, CC. It's author 101, like a an author of a book. It's out in Las Vegas, but there's a big one, and at that big one, then you in New York, I, I would don't try to pitch your book too much just go to learn and and that's true of networking in general is, is learn what is compelling to people before you start to pitch um I'll see if I can find the name I'm pretty sure it's just like publishers yeah okay and then Steve says thriller writers New York City so and also there's conventions for non-fictional versus fiction um so depending on the type of book that you're writing Mike says I'm a jack of all trades and not specialized in any one area. I struggle with how to market myself when everyone seems to be looking for expertise in specific sp skills. I need a new way to approach this in 2015. Any tips? Yes, Mike. So you kind of said the answer right in there is we influence people based off of their paradigm, their reality, their perception. And so if everyone seems to be looking for expertise, then you need to present yourself in an area of expertise. Now, here's the thing. You might be saying, but I really enjoy being a jack of all trades um, and I'm really good at all this stuff and that's great. But you need to niche down to one or two, three tops areas of expertise. And then when you bring these clients into your funnel, then it can grow into other projects or other aspects. So, for example, when I first started out, I was a, uh, a professional speaker on presentation skills, and I never sold myself as a speech writer, but people came to me asking for speech writing services, and I was very good at it, and so I took those projects on. And so it de develops into these different aspects. But your message needs to be clear, because if your message is not clear, then they don't know how to take action. So um, you need to niche down and be specific and clear with your message because if you can't clearly articulate what you can do for them, then you're not going to get them to take action with you at all. One great example is actually Influence HQ. As I started HQ to talk to people about how to be more influential, and it's kind of turning in out, uh, how do I explain this? It's turning more into a... a not more, but there's more of an aspect of personal development than I anticipated that people are asking for. Um, that we're we're delving into more um, uh, philosophical kind of talks in addition to the highly tactical things that we we talk about. It really is kind of that it's the mastermind of people who are wanting to grow more as professionals and be more skilled in their communication. And, you know, have the career advances be the result from that growth. And however, if I had tried to sell Influence HQ as, hey, become a better person in general, like it wouldn't have the same effect as you'll be more influential, you'll be the leader that you've always wanted to be, and you'll be able to sell more in an easier way than you ever have before. So being clear on the message and then seeing what comes from it after that. Lydia says that she struggled with the same issue and she agrees with me about developing a clear message. What has worked for Lydia is focusing less on skills and more on the unique attribu attributes like the type of client I want to work with or what makes me different than others in my skills. And no, it was a great question, Mike. I mean, you're not the only one who, who faces that. There are plenty of people who have different passions and different skill sets. So it's a common, it's a common thing that people kind of have to figure out and navigate. And in fact, in, in our last HQ call, that's one of the things that I worked with one of our members on is 
there are so many aspects of what she, she helps small businesses grow. That's the simplest way I can put it. And, but there are so many different ways that she can do that. And when she tries to shove all of those different aspects and methods in that one initial email, it's too overwhelming for the, the reader. It also, it, it just lost its clarity. And so then the reader doesn't know exactly where to take action. And that's why we workshopped through that with her on our last HQ hangout. And then she even has uploaded her fourth draft into the Facebook group. So it's like, even after that HQ call is over, there's still this continuous coaching process. In addition to me, the leader of the group, but then also there's this access to all these other people who are in the mastermind of Influence HQ who also offer their insights. So it's a phenomenal resource. And let's see. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. All right, you guys. What else can I help you out with? Um, again, signing up for Influence HQ by the end of the day today, that is before midnight Pacific Standard Time, you get a free coaching call with me. And um, that is a $350 value. And I'm going over here to... I would like, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen just so I can clearly see everything that's going on in your world over here. I also, if you like, you can unmute yourself and ask questions. Um, more than happy to do that. Happy to help Aurora. So happy you came on the line and thanks for sharing today's program. I know you sent the link to a person or two, so I appreciate that. All right, we still have people on the call. You guys are rock stars. How can I help? What are your goals? What problems are you facing? Um, this is your opportunity. Honestly, <laughs> this is your opportunity to get personal coaching with me. This is the person who has worked with, talked with, interviewed, learned from CIA agents, hostage negotiators, con artists, pickup artists, mentalists. If you want to learn how to be influential in your words and your presence, this is your chance. Take advantage. Don't hold back. I'm here for you. I want it also. Where is... Okay, that's still going. Good. Just making sure the technical side is still working. All right, guys. Last group was very chatty last time I did this webinar. What... Okay, one more question. Shoot, Aurora. It's all yours, girl. Oh, uh, oh, go ahead and ask it. And if you want, there's also a way you can send a personal message to me in this chat. Um, it says to send to everybody or to send to just me if you like. Um, Jacqueline says, I'm working on a part -time, as a part-time teacher and photographer. Can these skills work in all areas? I'm thinking of starting in... Uh, starting in my personal relationships too. Yes. Here's the thing. Um, all of these things just simply have to do with human beings. So if you are interacting with a human being, then this applies. <laughs> um, do you think this could help build my support system? I'm assuming you're referring to HQ. First of all, HQ is its own support system. So you have me, you have the people in HQ, and then, um, so the people in HQ, just so you know, we have uh, entrepreneurs, we have people in corporate, we have um, people in a kind of a, a spiritual realm building their coaching practice, we have a forensic, a financial forensic analyst. So it's a support system of people who know a bunch of people in a lot of different areas. And Again, it all the cornerstone of all of this is how to be influential with other human beings. So unless you are a hermit in a cave, this is going to be very helpful. Um, we don't we haven't directly delved too much into the personal lives. It's more of a business discussion in HQ. However, that's not out of um, out of design or or it, like I wouldn't shy away from the personal questions but we might just take it offline via email or something along those lines. Um, but the entire point of HQ is really to help people build their confidence, 
um, know how to navigate the different communication waters. So that's sales situations, um, it's presentations, which already that's highly stressful and nerve wracking and um, people hire me to overcome their stage fright and however that may manifest. It's also negotiation skills. So a lot of this applies to like how to get the deal that you really want to get. Aside from any legal advice, I can teach you how to be a better negotiator in, in business. And also copywriting, even though I talk a lot about personal one-on-one -on -one discussions or even one person talking to a group, a lot of the things that we talk about in HQ have to do with copywriting because for many people, the first introduction they have to you is an email or a LinkedIn message that you send or the copy on your website. All of this has to do with your words and how you use your words. So it, it applies in many different aspects. All right, I'm trying to, okay, yes. Luke says, oh, I lost it. Wait, Luke, I'm getting to it. It went away, okay. Luke says, I'm planning on juggling a creative crowdsourced project and developing a long distance relationship. Also intangible goals, but very much depending on how I present myself and my influence. Um, crowdfunding, absolutely. There's different aspects to creating a solid crowdfunding campaign. Obviously your copy is going to be very important, but then also the video that you create and how you present your product or service or whatever it is you're trying to get crowdfunded is going to be very critical as well as the bonuses that you offer people in your crowdfunding project. Um, that plays a role as well as what is going to be most compelling and then how you present those different options of how they can crowdfund. Uh, all of that has to do with, with influential psychology, absolutely, hands down. And you should join HQ and we can talk about it. <laughs> um, CC says, is niche down? Is that, is this, okay. So somebody says, I'm in transition. No, I'm sorry, I'm a transition navigator getting people from where they are to where they want to be uh, faster, better, easier, cheaper, safer, saner, and smarter. So they arrive with their sanity and authenticity, finance, health. Okay, to answer your question, uh, is this niche down enough? No. <laughs> um, you're covering a lot of aspects. You're covering a lot. You created a really solid list. And while I believe that you absolutely can help people in those aspects, you need to highlight three main areas. So we could break that up into different categories or like if you have a track record of, I really help people with this and this and this specific things. Again, I know that you can help people with their health or their finances and all of that, but when you are first introducing this concept to the person, you need to be specific. And also what will help is if you share a story of, I helped Nancy with X, Y, and Z, and this is what she had to say and things along those lines. So I definitely would workshop through that. And I totally understand where you're coming from because one of my best friends is an intuitive coach. And while, and I was a complete outsider to this whole concept of intuitive coaching. Um, and so working with her on her messaging and everything is, uh, she runs into the exact same thing that you're talking about. So um, again, it's not a unique problem, but definitely a solvable one. And Roderick, glad you made it to the call. He says, I'm working on mock interviews who need jobs, how to influence the interviewer. Absolutely. So wait, are you, Roderick, cl clarify for me. Are you teaching people how to be better interviewees or who, who are you personally doing interviews? Can you... Give me a little bit more specifics because I have a few thoughts on the whole interview process, specifically from the interviewer side, um, but definitely interviewee as well. I just find the interviewer side more fascinating because you can get a lot of really juicy stuff out of people, <laughs> but that's for another day. Um, uh, okay, I got a few private messages that I'm just scanning through. Um, Okay, Lydia says, any general tips on influencing people to sign up for my list, meaning her e-newsletter or a mailing list? Oh, and you're totally welcome, Cece. Uh, you're welcome, Josette. Looks like awesome. Okay, I'm going to go back to Lydia's first. Any general tips on influencing people to sign up for my list? 
So offering something for free is, is a general um, tip that you'll hear people say, uh, whether it's a free PDF, a free report, a free video, a free audio download, um, whatever will work best for your people. For my industry and my followers, the initial PDF and, and something that's actionable is more interesting compared to um, in other people in other markets, they prefer to watch a long video training. Um, so you kind of have to figure out what's going to be most interesting for your folks. Also, in general, getting people to sign up for your list, making sure that your website is clear about that this is a possibility on your site, making sure it's placed in prominent places. And, and color theory also comes into this, depending on what your branded colors are, then choosing something that's probably like the exact opposite so it pops out a little bit more. I'm not a designer, but these are just things that I've picked up over a period of time. And also being clear as to what they'll get from the newsletter. So even, let's say you don't offer something for free, if you say like, um, just pulling from my own world, more sales, uh, more confidence, whatever it is, being clear about the benefit from those aspects. And anytime you can throw in social proof, that always helps. Join the 5,000 people who are such and such. Join the top influencers who, whatever it is. So adding some sort of social proof can be helpful as well. Okay, Roderick says, um, he is helping others to get jobs. Okay, fantastic. So um, the first thing that comes to mind is going to be the body language and the presence of people making sure that they know how to put themselves in a confident state is going to be very important. And um, depending on, without knowing like specific industries or questions that come up, um, one important tip that I find most people totally forget is they are not just interviewing you, you are interviewing them. So you are figuring out how to uh, make yourself more appealing by using their leverage points. So like we talked about, if somebody looks, seems like they're a control freak, then you may, in your responses, say, and I love learning from people like yourself, um, but then somebody who values um, uh, like uh, their, that their team is independent, then you would change your answer slightly. If you haven't yet, I recommend that you get the, uh, on Creative Live, I did a course on, um, what, what did we end up calling it? <laughs> build your influence, build your business. And on day three of that course, we did a mock interview workshop. And so that may be of interest to you as well, is to check that out and download it and, and see, we just workshop that entire thing for like an hour or two. And Yusef says, how do you encourage more information to help sell to their needs without sounding rude? So one quick tip on that is going to be speaking in statements rather than questions. And you're totally welcome, Roderick. Happy to help. So with Yusef, um, and this is one thing that we talked about in HQ, but... Um, when you ask direct questions, then a, a process happens that we kind of filter through those questions. We think, why does this person want to know that information? What, how will they use it against me potentially? What am I comfortable sharing? So asking direct questions may not get you the result that you're wanting. So, uh, and this is a great Sherlock Holmes reference is that he has a, I can't remember the exact quote, but something along the lines of like, People hate to tell you things, but they love to correct you. So translating that into you speak a statement, you speak a, an assumed um, statement of some sort like, oh, you probably really like uh, the creative side of this, or you really probably really like the, the independent side or whatever it is, then if they disagree, then they will tell you, no, that's wrong. And then they will tell you why it's wrong, which means you are now building their influential profile with great ease. Um, when somebody disagrees with you, I think people that don't know this world of influence instantly become scared or feel like, the, oh, they disagreed, so I lost points in this conversation because they disagreed. And that's totally not the case. This is, again, where 
you gaining control and power and confidence in every conversation. Because when somebody disagrees with you, it's even sometimes even better information on how to influence them based off of the reasons they give you for disagreeing. And in HQ, I've talked with people about why you actually want to sometimes create little mini arguments because that can sometimes be the best way to get all the information that you need. Corporate spies use that technique a lot for different reasons. Um, and in HQ, I, I teach P the HQ members of how to translate in that into their own lives and which personality types to use that on and, and where in the conversation, things like that. So I shall bring up Influence HQ again. Please go sign up. It's sharice-alexander.com uh, slash Influence HQ. Um, again, for the bonus today, if you sign up by the end of the day today, that's before midnight Pacific Standard Time, you get a free consultation with me. That's a $350 value. And I'm putting up the link again for you. So take advantage of, of this bonus offer because it's the last one of 2014. <laughs> um, you're more than welcome, Yusuf. I hope that that helps. And I hope to see you in HQ because we need, we need more Brits over here. Assuming you're British. I don't know if you're from somewhere else. But I love the Londoners. And um, what else? Any other questions? We still have quite a few people on the line. I, well, Yusuf, you made it to the call today, and Influence HQ starts at the exact same time, just on Wednesdays. So it starts at 9.30 in the morning Pacific Standard Time, which I believe you said is 5.30 p.m. your time, and it's just on Wednesdays rather than Thursdays. So your excuse is invalid, sir, and you should be in Influence HQ because you seem like an awesome dude. <laughs> Thank you for hopping on the call, Lisa. Have a great day. And Cece's so busy taking notes, which is phenomenal. I love that. And yeah, I know, Yusuf, I'm kind of like influential and stuff. <laughs> so you should be in HQ. All right, we have quite a few people still on the call. Thank you, Mike. You're awesome. Thank you, Cece. You're a sweetheart. <laughs> Jacqueline, thank you for hopping on the call. I appreciate it. Any questions about HQ? If anybody's on the... All right, we still have quite a few people on the line, which means you are getting value out of this. You are seeing how this information can play out in your life professionally and personally. And chances are you are considering HQ. So the question to you is... What, what questions do you have? What obstacles or barriers do you perceive that are keeping you from signing up in HQ? And go ahead and share them. If you like, you can sh send me the private message uh, with those thoughts, and I'm more than happy to address them. But you hop on these free webinars because you are the type of person who is interested in personal growth and professional development, and you think ahead and that is why you are looking ahead of towards 2015 and what you want to accomplish and who you want to be. Science has proven over and over again is that when you have a support group around you to achieve those goals, then you are more likely to achieve those goals. We also hold each other accountable to things um, in HQ. So if this, is, if this is the type of person that you are, that you are wanting professional and personal development, HQ is the place for you. It's, it is your haven. It is your safe place to talk about problems that you're facing, to figure out strategies of how to overcome. People in HQ have landed sales deals because of this. People have redesigned their pitches because of it. People have had better relationships with their coworkers because of this. So um, I, I, I'm getting a few private messages from people right now saying that it's a financial um, decision and and that may be holding them back and I completely understand that and I respect that I will say that again because of HQ we have people who are making more sales so it's not just this is not a cost this is an investment um, also with HQ is you can sign up um, you can cancel at any time if you sign up for the monthly 
then if you, after two months, you say, hey, I got my value out of this, this has been great, um, or you know, I just can't make this time commitment right now, I'm gonna sign off, that's totally fine. No, no judgment, no um, anything, you know, no problem whatsoever. Um, but chances are you're going to get so much information and lessons out of HQ that you're going to stay on because that's my goal is to have you. But again, if it's financial, but you really want to do this in 2015, the prices of HQ are going to go up. So if you sign up now before they go up, you lock yourself into the $97 a month versus the, it'll be over a hundred dollars a month. I haven't decided yet. Um, and that will be changing next year. So FYI, if you want it at the lowest rate possible, this is it. Okay. I'm getting private messages and somebody says that they're, they're, uh, finishing another program, which is totally understandable and cool. And I hope you have a fantastic year as well. A great new year. I'm sorry. I'm going to mispronounce it. Hemidreza. Um, thank you so much for hopping on the call today. Really appreciate it. We still have a good amount of people on the line and personality coach basically. And what's the incentive for joining by tonight? Okay. Luke, great question. He says, IHQ is a month to month online personal coaching program. And what's the incentive by joining tonight is that if you join by the end of the day today, you get a personal one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me. So, and that's again, my rates for that start at $350 an hour. So you are already making back your investment if you sign up by the end of the day today. Um, also with IHQ, if you sign up, you can do month to month and then you can also sign up for the full year. And if you find, sign up for the full year, you get actually two months for free. So um, that's another option for you as well. And it's personal coaching slash, I also like to talk about it as a mastermind. Because in addition to getting personal coaching with me and, and, and then learning from the questions from the group as well, you also get with the Facebook group, um, people helping you out with, with your stuff in the Facebook group as well. And also it's 100% live. I know many programs like this that they offer a lot, a, a system like this, like you, but you get a recorded call from the leader. So the leader like sits down at two in the morning and they talk about something they want to talk about. They upload it to the library and you just listen to it as if it's like a podcast. And that's not what IHQ is, is that I actually, you know, the first Wednesday of the month and the third Wednesday of the month, I am live there with you and answer your direct questions. So this isn't just a, a an automated system. It's, it's something that I actively put in my, energy to, which means that if you have specific issues or problems, then you bring them the tape to the table and I directly help you with them. So a little bit about that. Um, do I need to take the one, two, one immediately? I don't know what that means. Yusuf. Do I need to take the one, two, one immediately? Can you clarify what the one, two, one is? Not clear. You're welcome, Luke. I hope you join. I think you'll love it one-on-one -on -one that you're offering. Oh, oh, okay. I'm with you. All right. Great question. So when you sign up today for Influence HQ, you get the free one-on-one -on -one session with me, $350 value. Do you need to make that appointment immediately? No, you do not. Once you sign up, then I will be sending you a link as to how you can use your one-on-one -on -one session. And so if you want to do something after the holidays, or if you want to have our one-on-one -on -one session, after being in a few months in Influence HQ, then totally cool. That is up to you as to how you want to use it. So great question. Yes, happy to answer that. Didn't, didn't think to clarify that and I appreciate that greatly. So got quite a few people on the call. Some of you I know have, have some uh, things you've been thinking about asking or things you're thinking about, you know, bringing up. So this is your chance. <laughs> Jonathan's a rock star. <laughs> Jonathan, thank you for letting me know that I have 999 likes on my Facebook page <laughs> and asking who will have the honor of being the 1,000th. I certainly hope that with somebody here, we have, we have still have 
24 people on the call and we're we're an hour and a half into this free webinar so some somebody on this of these 24 people left i hope you go to my facebook page and like it jonathan i love you that's adorable woohoo cc bringing it on home for 1000 boom <laughs> you guys are great <laughs> thank you very much I appreciate that. That was that's very nice. <laughs> you guys are rock star. Go team indeed. <laughs> well, how else can I help you guys? We still have quite a few people on the call. Um, I am here for you. This is your time. I love it. I love it. That's so fun. I look forward to seeing that 1000. I'm not going to go over to Facebook just yet. I'll do it after the call to go check it out. And of course, you know, if anybody wants to be 1001 or 1002, those are good spots too. Um, but let's talk about you. This isn't about me. This is about you. How can I help you guys? And again, you can send me a private message. If you have a question about HQ or anything, let me know. I think you mentioned writing, or Susan, Suzanne, or Su I think that's Suzanne. Ah, so I think you mentioned writing a book in the last webinar. Do you have any more details about that? Unless that was my imagination. No, I'm, I am working on a book, Suzanne. It's, um, it's a process. It's a process indeed. Um, Rose, thank you for being on the call. Have a great holiday and happy new year as well. Um, no further details on that. Um, Suzanne, it's a, it's, um, it's a whole thing of working with the agent and then publishers and that whole bit. So I, but I promise you that once there are details, I will be shouting it from the mountaintops, making sure people know about it. Um, the beautiful thing, though, is that in the last few months, I have gained more access to more uh, well-known top influencers. I can't really say much more than that, but there'll be names that you recognize and very cool people. And so because of working my networking channels, um, those people being in the book is, is a huge win. And, and, uh, I look forward to sharing about that when I am able to. And CC, thank you very much. And thank you again for being number 1000. Uh, have a wonderful Christmas holiday and a happy new year to you as well. All right. We are wrapping to our final moments. This is your last chance to ask your question uh, if anything is, um, you know, that you're wanting to work through, any problems, any goals, of course, you know, I'm more than happy to talk about Influence HQ and to get you into our phenomenal mastermind and more than happy to have that one-on-one -on -one private coaching session with you to really talk through your professional goals and the things that you're wanting to accomplish in 2015 and uh, overcome a lot of those conversations or obstacles or relationship dynamics that you just haven't been able to crack the code on. So uh, sign up for HQ and we can workshop through all of that good stuff. All right, folks. We still have, man, quite a few people on the call. But without knowing your, your burning desires and uh, anything else, then I might have to call it a day on this call. Thank you so much for hopping on the call and, and taking notes on the things today. And thank you um, for your time. And I will do my best to get the recording out as soon as possible. It always takes a little time to convert. But thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful holiday season with your friends, family, and loved ones. Have a safe new year. And for those of you who have signed up for Influence HQ, I will be talking with you very soon for your one-on-one -on -one session and then giving, granting you access to our library and our Facebook group and, and talking with the amazing influencers in HQ and having you be one of them. Thank you guys once again, and have a great holiday season. And as always, please do stay connected. I'll be talking with you soon. Bye-bye.